Hey Canucks fans, Jake Vertanen clears waivers, Braden Holtby will likely not be bought out, and who is going to be our fourth line center? I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC at the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, July the 26th. Subscribe now for Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. Had a lot of people, and I'm so grateful for not only everyone yesterday, but the way that this channel has grown in the past week or so, because a lot of Canucks news to talk about, and I think a lot of people are coming here to get um, some insight and some news and some reflection. So I thank you, and I certainly do not take you for granted. A lot of things going on today. Looking, and uh, uh, some of them are, are based on this Wednesday opening of free agency, which is coming up on Wednesday in a couple days. So that's, that's why I think there's some urgency to a few of these things. So let's talk about them. The first one, Jake Vertanen, Clears waivers. No surprise here. I talked about yesterday how the Canucks placed Jake Vertanen on unconditional waivers for the purposes of buying out his contract. Yesterday's vlog talked about the reasons why. More of a hockey decision, less of a legal decision. And I know a lot of people might not agree with that, but the proof is the Canucks were talking about this in the season, during the season, before all the all the legal issues started happening. So um, yes, a hockey decision and a no-brainer when it comes to money. The Canucks, Vertanen's cap hit will only be 50000 not 500000 50000 this season instead of 2.55. That's a saving of $2.5 million this year when it comes to cap. Next season, $500,000 cap hit as opposed to zero, so you quote, lose five hundred grand. but in the grand scheme of things, you save $2 million over two years, which is, uh, which is a lot of savings. So Jake Vertanen will be placed on waivers on, no, he uh, will be bought out, I should say, today or tomorrow ahead of Wednesday's deadline. Braden Holtby is another player that maybe we thought could be bought out, kind of the second leading candidate for the Canucks. Hearing more and more, and Thomas Strands reported this as well this morning, that Braden Holtby will not be bought out by the Canucks just yet. So a couple of things here. There's actually a second buyout window near the end of the summer. So even if there's a, even there's no buyout for Hopi before Wednesday, possible that they could do it later in the summer. And that's because why would you buy Hopi out if you can actually get assets for him in a trade? You buy him out, you save a bit of money, but then that, that contract becomes, the cap hit becomes over two years, not one. We know those rules now. We've talked about that many times. But if you trade him outright instead, you could get, you not only clear his salary, but you get, an asset or two back. Now, of course, that asset or two is going to co cost something in, in terms of salary and cap hit room, but at least you're getting an asset or two back, and at least you're not paying someone to not play for your team. So that's why the Canucks would probably rather explore a trade as opposed to a true buyout. And again, they have another chance to do so later in the summer. They're going to see what happens with Seattle. Did they take them in the expansion draft, which would be the best? No, they didn't. So will they trade with Seattle or another team as opposed to simply buying them out? So that's what, I think that's what the strategy is with Braden Holtby. Another important thing about today on, on the NHL calendar, today's the day you have to qualify restricted free agents. What that means is if um, you're not an unrestricted free agent and you haven't earned that right until you've played seven years in the league. So for restricted free agents like Elias Patterson and Quinn Hughes and Connor Garland and Jason Dickinson and so on and so forth, you have to at least qualify them. What that means is you, in essence, retain retain the rights to continue to negotiate exclusively exclusively with them. So the Canucks, for instance, did not qualify restricted free agent Jace Harlock. That means Harlock is free. He becomes a UFA on Wednesday, unrestricted free agent, so he can sign with any team on Wednesday. However, if the Canucks qualify players like they will, Pedersen, Hughes, and, of course, Garland and Dickinson, two of our newcomers, you basically qualify them. It's 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 more than a goodwill gesture. It's it's important because, like I said, it secures your your rights to deal to negotiate exclusively with this player. But it usually the player doesn't take that offer that that qualifying offer. There's a negotiation, whether it's arbitration, whether it's simply the two team uh, the two sides coming to another agreement. So, for instance, Elias Pearson, he will be qualified because of the old rules. Um, when I say old rules, you get qualified at a certain percentage of your last year, your contract. So Patterson will be qualified at 900 grand, obviously a no-brainer, but we'll also a no-brainer. We know he's going to make way more than that in his next contract. So that's a, 
that's more of a formality. That's a great example of a formality in this case, where you qualify Pedersen, Hughes, um, Dickinson, Garland at the number of their last contract, the last year of their contract. But we know for all four of those guys that their new contracts are going to be much more than that. So all these players will not accept their qualifying offers, but do not, don't be scared. That doesn't mean they're leaving. That just means they're going to negotiate for, for a better contract. Last thing I want to talk about, the fourth line center. We know that the Vancouver Canucks four group is shaping up really well. Whatever combination or permutation you want to put together, we know there's Besser, Miller, and Pedersen, Horvat, Hoglander, and Garland, Dickinson, Podkolzin, and Pearson. That's a great top nine. We know that Tyler Mott will be on the fourth line, then one of McEwen or, or Highmore on his other wing. So we still need a center to go there. I don't think you go to Brandon Sutter, even if he wants to take a pay cut. I think um, I think you you go away from him. Yes, he made four million last year. You don't want to bring him in for about a million or so. Will he even take that much of a discount? And do we need that type of player? I like Travis Boyd a lot better, actually. Now Boyd wasn't great when he came here. He like had two points, I think, in uh, two points in 19 games, which isn't great. With Toronto, he had actually had eight points in 20 games, which is a lot better. So last season, he had 10 points in 39 games. So that's not bru- that's not awesome, but it's not brutal. 10 points in 39 games, that's 20 points over an 82-game season. That's pretty good for a fourth-line player, or at least a bottom six player, or de- at least decent. Now I think about it, it's not really good. So I would go with Travis Boyd. I like his game. I like his versatility. Um, and I, I, I think he has got more speed than Sutter. Probably not as good defensively, but that's why we have Dickinson. So I would go... I would explore Travis Boyd as a fourth line center. And because he only made eight or nine hundred grand last year, he would be closer to one million as opposed to center coming down from four million to one million. So just a quick thought there on who our fourth line center may be. So Canucks fans, lots to talk about today. Would love to hear your comments about are you surprised that Jake Vertanen cleared waivers? I'm not, I don't think you are, but tell me if you are. We talked about um, Braden Holtby. Do you expect a buyout over the next two days? Or do you, do you agree with me that a trade route is better and you can always buy them out later in the summer? Any, are you worried at all about qualifying offers for any of our players, our research free agents? I don't think so. Jace Harlock, big loss for you. Let me know. And then, of course, lastly, what I just talked about was this whole fact of fourth line center. Who do you think, who would be a good fourth line center in your eyes? So many things you can talk about. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Credible, Nux Fan number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shea Family Channel, JB Sports Dr. Morris, Shannon Hollingworth, and Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You're listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or any of my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Special, I meant to do this at the start of the, the video, so hopefully he forgives me, and a special... Happy birthday to Hall of Fame member, Nux fan number 29. Appreciate you. I appreciate our chats, our Zoom chats. I appreciate how you always make me laugh, either during or more likely after one of our chats. And uh, yes, happy birthday to you, Nux fan number 29. Thank you for your support as a Hall of Fame member. But more importantly, thanks for who you are and, and all you do and, and for your friendship. It's been a lot of fun getting to know you better. So if you want to leave a comment down below and wish Nux fan number 29 a happy birthday. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Okay, Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Become a member of this channel if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go. I almost forgot to do that.